we can use integrated rate laws and some graphing to find the rate constants of different processes. We can use the rate constants to find the half-life. Now from nuclear chemistry and from a math class where you discuss exponential decay, you might remember that half-life is the time it takes for half of your remaining material to be left in a decay process. So in a chemical reaction, half-life is how long does it take for half of your initial reactants to be remain after they're consumed. The calculation for half-life is different depending on the order of the reactant. If we look at the summary table that's found in the end of this section, you'll see that at the bottom of it there are half-life calculations. T1 half symbol is referring to half-life. And so for a zeroth order, the half-life is the initial concentration divided by two times the rate constant. The first order is 0.693 divided by the rate constant, and I'll show you where that comes from later. And for a second order, the half-life is 1 over the rate constant times the initial concentration. Something to point out is that for a first order reaction, the half-life is a constant value. It's just dependent on the rate constant. Whereas for a zeroth and second order reaction, the half-life actually changes depending on what your initial concentration is in a problem. This is why in math class, when they did exponential decay with you, they always did first order decay. They always used a constant half-life so that the math is a little bit easier. Here's some sample data from a chemical reaction. Let's see if we can figure out what the half-life of this reaction is. Well, first, we have to figure out what order it is. What I can do right off the bat is I could graph my time versus concentration and see if it's linear. Nope, I definitely have some kind of exponential decay here. So that means it's not zeroth order. Concentration versus time would give us a zeroth order reaction. All right, so we can delete that. So let's see if we could do the inverse of concentration versus time. So I can set this cell equal to one divided by the concentration cell and hit enter. And that gives me the inverse concentration. And then I can autofill the rest. And those are all my inverse concentrations. So if I graph this versus time, I can figure out if it's second order. Nope, I don't have a linear process here. So I'm hoping that this is a first order reaction. I want to find the natural log of concentration. So I can set this equal to the natural log of my concentration. So that's B5 again. I hit enter. They want to autofill these, which is great. And so now I can graph my natural log of concentration versus time and see what I get. Well, that's not a useful graph to us, but it is looking pretty linear. So let's change this to a scatter plot. Ooh, and that's, that's looking pretty linear. Okay, let's customize this. And I can put a trend line in. Oh, looking better still. And for my label, I can use an equation. And I can show the R squared. Oh, my R squared value is one. All right, so I very much have a linear equation. And what I'm seeing here is that the slope of my linear equation is negative 0.45. So we've discovered that this is a first order reaction and that the K value for this is 0.45. From the graph we made, we learned two things. We know that this is a first order reactant. And because we know that the slope is negative 0.45, K is going to be equal to positive 0.45. So K equals 0 0.45 we want to find the half-life. By definition, the half-life means that my final amount is going to equal half of my initial amount. So if I say my initial amount is, let's just say x, my final amount is going to be one half of x. So I can plug all of this information into my integrated rate law. I could say the natural log of one half x equals negative 0.45 and the time that we now have is that half-life plus the natural log of x. All right, well, we can slide things around. We can say the natural log of 1 half x minus ln of x equals negative 0.45 times my half-life. These are exponential functions here, the natural log. So if you're subtracting one from the other, that's the same thing as dividing. So I could say the natural log of 1 half x divided by x equals negative 0.45 times my half-life. Well, my x's now cancel out. 
So all I have here is that the natural log of one half equals negative 0.45 times my half-life, or the negative value of my natural log of one half all over 0.45 equals t one half. That's the equation that we saw in that summary chart where it said that 0 0.693 over k is going to equal your half-life. 0.693 is the negative natural log of one half. Let's finish this up. I get a half-life for this process of 1.54 seconds.